What's up artists? In today's video I'm going to show you how I created this piece of animation using my non-dominant hand and more importantly why I used my non-dominant hand. And of course I'm going to be using the awesome Procreate Dreams 2. In today's video I want to talk about two principles in animation. The first one is how to put the perfectionist in us to sleep. This is one of the things that I really wish I knew before or I have practiced before. Um, really focusing so much on the line look instead of focusing on the movement captured with the lines or the drawings is a major mistake. And the second principle that I wanna talk about is how to plan a shot. So I'm gonna combine these two within this following exercise. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is go into the MT and create a new project. Then I'm gonna add a drawing layer. And now I'm going to make background. Let's say something that has a little bit more action than just the typical ground all right and what I want to do now is to have a ball rolling down there now I'm gonna create a new flipbook let's plan the shot the first thing I want to do is to imagine the shot in my head and I'm gonna start by drawing the the ball and then I want to think it's gonna get to this point so let's talk briefly about the difference between a frame and a keyframe a frame is just a drawing captured at any moment within the timeline or the animation a key frame key is a keyword here right so Keyframe is a frame that defines a pivotal moment. That's one way, I guess, to describe it. Meaning, in this case here, this here is going to be the beginning of a new era, if you must, or a new chapter, or a new big movement. Now, I wouldn't necessarily describe a frame in here as a keyframe, although I can definitely argue that this is important because when you see that frame in here you would know that uh, or you would have the idea that you know what I don't think the ball went like that right so technically I could argue that this frame here is a key frame because it helps me on knowing that the ball didn't just jump out Okay, and this here would be a keyframe, this ball hitting the wall. So that tells you the story of the fact that the ball actually hits the wall. And then it bounces off and then rebounds back here. And that's gonna be my action. A little variation in scale not to worry about but make it this way maybe this big so that's pretty much it that's a simple planning for my shot you can also draw lines if you want just to kind of simplify what is the process how things are gonna go especially if you're handing this piece off to someone okay now moving on to the next principle that I want to cover which is ignoring the perfection or putting the perfectionist in you to sleep. How am I gonna do that? The simplest way is to um, just draw loosely, but guess what? It's a temptation that is really hard to resist. And we tend to just get into the point of like, oh, it's just a ball. And then, you know what, let me just fix it. You know what, let me just erase, let me whatsoever. So I, I tell my students, when you're doing ideation or concepting or doing just kind of the beginning stages of design forget about the eraser once you bring in the eraser then you're gonna you're basically inviting that perfectionist in you but we would still do that naturally now here is my pro tip for you forget about your dominant hand and use your non-dominant hand ever since i came up with it 
it made me feel, you know what? No matter what I'm gonna do, there will be no chance it would be perfect. You, the anxiety is already out of the door. And from there, everything else is gonna feel a lot more casual and you're gonna enjoy doing the animation. Instead of focusing on the line quality, you focus on the movement or the animation quality. So let me demonstrate one of the key features in the new Procreate Dreams, which is the amazing changes that they made on the flipbook. And one of them is the fact that you can actually hide a layer of a flipbook. You can actually also click here and add a new flipbook. So now I can draw on that new flipbook and I can always go back to the planning one. Pretty cool. In other video, I'm gonna cover the flipbook in more details, technically. Okay, so I'm gonna start by drawing the ball. And I'm already tempted to just undo and clean, but no, just nothing. Then I'm gonna go into frame two here. And before I continue, my typical preference is I increase the opacity of the onion skin or onion layer and then reduce maybe the frames maybe to two and definitely I would make the backwards one red and the forward one to be blue just to stick to the traditional and in a way logical choice okay so here's the next drawing that I want. And as soon as you just remind yourself that, well, I'm just using my left hand, no more anxiety. It's actually a lot more fun. Uh, now, a side note here to mention Notice how the first flipbook frame shows you just that ball, the circle. The second one doesn't. It just feels like, where's the ball? The third one does. My suspicion is that I might have accidentally just touched the tablet anywhere. And Procreate Dreams is very sensitive, which is nice. And to know if that's the case, once I click on transform, look at that. It's giving me beyond the selection of that ball there. So if I go and click the eraser and pick something large, transform, there you go. And now the result, voila. So that is something that could be confusing to you. And it could be an indication for you to know that, hey, the, you, you kind of have more pixels than what you need on that frame. Okay, frame four three here and then four would be right there I'm not even bracing my hand it's all just my hand is in the air and drawing movement five would be here I can even make it to kind of bounce if I want to but let's stick to the plan of focusing on the movement. Um, kind of a, a bump like that might be very confusing, so I wouldn't mind just making it less confusing. You know what, here, I'll just just because that deformation is very confusing and it really kills the readability of the ball and lastly i have this frame and of course because i want to create that recoil or the rebound then i'll just make it to roll just for a little bit okay so if I go here to the flip book and click on the settings and then click on the uh, project and then here is the frame per second, I'm going to play it 12 frames per second instead 
of uh, 24 just so I would be able to kind of sense what's the movement going to be here okay let's start by adding and notice how I'm not even zooming in it would it would make my drawing better but I want to force myself to just focus on the movement if you want to polish it you can polish it later okay so I'm on that first frame and then plus and then here is that frame and then I would go to every other one and hit plus so I hit plus here just so I can add that ball in there and kind of to touch on another thing which is where is the midpoint the midpoint wouldn't be in the middle necessarily because there is acceleration here right so the midpoint here would be rather a little closer to the beginning frame of that rolling when it's there just a little bit behind it's gonna give a teeny tiny sense of acceleration okay go to the next frame and hit plus all the way there right so here like I mentioned even though the midpoint could be just here I'm gonna make the midpoint to be here instead why because that gives me uh, a greater sense of acceleration as I view the final animation now um, this frame and then adding a frame why am I clicking on the original ones and adding frame why am I not adding to this one right and then adding another one and then adding another one I'm working systematically meaning what I'm doing is focusing on adding the frames adding the frames sandwich the frames uh, that are needed instead of adding blasting all the frames that are needed this way I am consistently adding a consistent number of frames as needed and then I can worry later on oh you know what I can add more frames I can hold more frames whatsoever so this way it's just healthier and easier for me not to really think about too many things simultaneously okay so I'm just gonna add one frame here one frame in the middle and then one frame between each keyframe just to make sure I'm stayed on track all right so now I have this and then I think I went here and then this one yeah I think I need one right here now so hit plus and then just draw the in between okay and then go here and then add plus and then I want the in between between these two frames go here and then add a frame you can you can either add a small bounce or just make it roll but I'll just simplify and keep it to just roll for now okay let's see what I have actually <laughs> it's fun to draw with the left hand I feel that uh, there's zero pressure and also uh, as you can see that that very loose movement as I have demonstrated before on that uh, diving board that is very loose and not perfect intentionally it just adds more feeling to it more character to it Okay. I'm gonna go to each one of these frames and add a frame 
and sandwich a frame in between. And I'm also gonna stay far away. By the way, if you didn't hear, uh, Michelangelo, <laughs> not that I'm comparing myself in any even remote way to him, when he drew the Sistine Chap uh, Chapel, I think it's called Sistine Chapel, um, it took him about four years. And by the time he was done, he noticed that he got a lot better by the time he was done. And interestingly, he went back to his to the drawing that he started with and started on improving upon them using the newly acquired experience that he gained after drawing for four years in that area. I mean, just imagine, he was provided the food, the tools, and the commission. At least, I believe, he was commissioned, he better have been, um, for those drawings. And um, he's just there, enjoying his life, doing the thing he's passionate about. I don't know about you, but I feel that I could do something like that. And again, you would be thinking, will they provide the Wi-Fi password? Okay. <laughs> so I feel that after this big bounce, the rolling is unrealistic. Um, what I can do is uh, the first thing I'll do is actually go back to the original plan, okay? And notice how it wasn't here, it wasn't studied here what's going to be the action. I might have been... Um, I might have anticipated that I might change it. So I'll take the credit for that vision. <laughs> so let me try to... Okay, so this one here. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Transform and make it just bounce off just a little bit. Then I'll add another frame here. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's see. <laughs> Okay, so remember, uh, we plan the shot first and we forget about perfection and we have fun with it. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something.